If I do my job the way they're doing their job, there'd be dead people. Ohio's criminal background checks broken. I don't want my past being brought up to me after I've already dealt with it. The system meant to catch criminals leaves some off the record, making families vulnerable to those they trust the most. It's scary. I guess you just have to trust that something is working. Ohio's police officers kept in the dark about thousands of criminal records. I don't want to get a call at 2 in the morning of a fellow officer who's been involved in a situation because he or she couldn't take the proper precautions. A system so broken, those who run it describe it as ugly. What did the Attorney General know and when? Tonight, our investigation bringing change to make Ohio families safer. Thank you for joining us for this 10 TV News special report, Criminals Off the Record. I'm Kristen Hartman. And I'm Jerry Revish. Ohio's criminal background check system is supposed to protect Ohio's children from coming in contact with criminals. It also helps keep police officers safe on our streets. In this half hour, 10 Investigates will show you how that system is broken, who's to blame, and what's being done to fix it to help keep you safe. And if you have a computer, a tablet, or a phone nearby, look for these icons to view additional information during this special. Now, here's 10 Investigates' Nathan Baca with a closer look. Criminal records are something you likely don't spend any time in your day thinking about. After all, they're complicated, and they're kept in these filing cabinets or complicated computer systems. But if you think about it, so many people that you love are cared for by those who are supposed to have clean criminal records. You may have just assumed this system was working as it was supposed to. But there is something, a lot in fact, to be worried about. In our special report, we'll break these problems down into three parts. First, we'll show you the problem, the dangerous criminals the background check system missed. Second, we'll show you how these problems create a false sense of security and potentially leave you at risk. Finally, we'll show you how the problems can be fixed and what it's going to take. But we begin our investigative journey where many of you begin your day, leaving your kids off at the school bus stop. The open school bus door. It's a moment every weekday when a parent places their trust in another person. For these parents, the school bus driver has the most important job to safely transport their kids to and from school. How important is that trust? Extremely important. They're they take care of our babies. This is where our investigation began last fall. That's when Whitehall bus driver Christopher Litostansky assaulted a six-year-old girl. It was caught on camera and Litostansky lost his job. It would be six weeks before the state notified Whitehall schools about his criminal charges. But his case prompted us to dig deeper to find how many school bus drivers were arrested while parents and school districts had no clue. 10 investigates found four central Ohio districts with bus drivers charged after they were hired. The crimes include theft, assault, domestic violence, and even a sex crime. In fact, districts never received notice on three of the criminal bus drivers we found. Nor did Columbus know they had a driver wanted for failing to comply with the protection order. And then there's Kevin Kusar. He drove Columbus City school children. Last April, police arrested him after he pointed a gun at his wife's head and said, good night. He pled guilty to aggravated menacing, but until we told Columbus City Schools, Kusar was still driving kids to school. When we became aware of it um, through this investigation, we were able to then move forward and start our process. Kevin Kusar no longer drives for Columbus City Schools. It's supposed to work like this. If a person working at a school gets arrested, the school district would be notified by a special system that is managed by the Ohio Attorney General. Fingerprints taken when employees begin working at schools are stored, then continually compared against fingerprints of newly arrested people. When a match is found, the Attorney General's office notifies the school electronically. Now in a couple months, we're going to have a, a better system and where the information will flow immediately about specifically what that person is charged with. We still wanted to know, why did it take months for some districts to get notices? And why did some school districts never hear from the state? 10 investigates discovered a major flaw in the wrapback system. It all comes down to fingerprints. Remember the Christopher Litostansky case? Whitehall, like many police agencies in Ohio, does not fingerprint suspects of misdemeanors. But those misdemeanors can include some pretty serious crimes, including endangering children. That means weeks and months can go by before the alert system is triggered, notifying schools of an arrest. 
Then we found cases where criminals' fingerprints were never taken for their crimes against children. Take Jessica Park. Last summer, police found her at this Southside gas station in the driver's seat of a vehicle. They learned that Park was there with a friend to inject heroin while her three-year-old daughter was in the back seat. Park was found passed out and near death. I mean, I was a heroin user. I mean, I had to go to rehab for four months. Police charged Park with endangering children. According to Columbus police records, because she was taken to the hospital, no fingerprints were taken. When her conviction was sent to the state last November, even with her social security number, there was no record of her arrest because those fingerprints were missing. I don't want my past being brought up to me after I've already dealt with it. Now, the reason why we bring up people's criminal past isn't to harass them. People with criminal records can rehabilitate themselves and get jobs, but the law has special requirements for those who work with children and the elderly. And we're not just talking about problems with fingerprints here. There are so many people who work at daycares or as home health care aides who have criminal records, they're getting these jobs. So many people, not just families with children, rely on complete and accurate criminal backgrounds. One of them would remake the bed or while I was in the shower and money would turn up missing. Jim Minwegan's home health aide, Diana Baker, got her job despite having a criminal record of aggravated menacing. That leaves a Columbus police detective questioning how it happened. How did these two people specifically that we have mugshots on get employed? Don't know myself. You may not have these people working in your home, but danger could still be next to you. The law requires that people who want to purchase a gun go through a background check. It's there so that people who aren't supposed to have them don't. When mistakes happen, it's the job of the ATF, the federal agency that polices illegal gun sales to retrieve them. Last year, the ATF got a request to do that more than 2,400 times after the FBI discovered a mistake was made. So we've seen a lot of failures and the dangers it creates when criminals go off the record. The question we kept asking ourselves was why? The Attorney General's office runs Ohio's criminal background check system through the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. They keep much of what goes on inside their London, Ohio headquarters confidential. But how big of a problem is this? Officials at the Ohio Attorney General's office won't comment on specific cases, but records can tell the story. You know when you're at work and your computer won't do what you're telling it to? You often send an email to the people at IT to help out. Same thing goes for the people at BCI. So we gathered the emails and memos those employees sent to their IT people. And after sifting through thousands of those records, we discovered just how alarmed those employees are with Ohio's criminal background check system. In the summer of 2012, workers at the Attorney General's office complained that it's getting ugly with people looking for information on their background checks. In the fall of 2012, the state's computer stopped communicating for more than a day with the FBI system where all national criminal records are stored. It was fixed. But in February 2013, problems with the state server meant that fingerprints sent to the state weren't being captured. Those working on the lost transactions issues noted that the system was years old and cobbled together. Problems continued through August 2013 before all the missing fingerprints were found and put back in the system. During this time, the BCI record system was telling employers their job applicants had no criminal record, only to discover later the applicants were criminals. Who are these criminals? We'd like to tell you, but the Ohio Attorney General's Office won't say. The Attorney General's Office won't reveal who they initially tagged as safe, only to realize they missed their criminal record. They blacked out over three years worth of names, but we counted just how many criminals the system missed. More than 1,100, and these are just the ones we know. So far, we've shown you how these background checks are letting criminals slip through the cracks. But they're not alone. I thought that maybe someone had stolen my identity. Coming up, see how records missing for months are keeping people with clean criminal records from getting a job. And 10 Investigates digs deeper, uncovering problems that go beyond Columbus, affecting people all across Ohio, when our special report, Criminals Off the Record, returns. Welcome back to a 10 TV News special report, Criminals Off the Record. I'm Jerry Revish. And I'm Kristen Hartman. Before the break, 10 investigates revealed the existence of thousands of missing criminal records. Those records form the backbone of what keeps criminals away from Ohio's children 
and the elderly. But as 10 Investigation Nathan Baca shows, the system meant to keep this from happening is collapsing despite years of warnings. Just think about it. Very personal details about you and everyone around you goes through network computers like these all the time. Fingerprints, police reports, court records, all stored inside computers can tell you about people's criminal pasts so we can protect ourselves in the present. Even if you don't have a criminal record, you can hardly get a job these days without a background check. So we'll continue our investigative journey by showing how some courts are to blame for the broken criminal background check system. My. Nora Lima always wanted to be a nurse. Prized possessions. <laughs> she just waited until she was 58 to work on that dream. The nursing bag. <laughs> Lima graduated from nursing school June 2012, but she couldn't take her nursing board exam until October because of a four month delay in her background check. Emails obtained by 10 Investigates shows the nursing board says they didn't receive Lima's information from the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. BCI is part of the Ohio Attorney General's office. I thought that maybe someone had stolen my identity and had committed crimes or something using my identity because surely it wouldn't take that long. During that delay, Nora watched her training and her dreams of being a nurse slowly slip away. When you see this email, how does it make you feel? Really mad. If I do my job the way they're doing their job, there'd be dead people. <laughs> Lima's case was not the only one. 10 investigates found at least 300 other emails detailing delays in getting nurses clearance to take their final exams. And this problem does not just affect nurses. More internal emails from the group running Ohio's criminal background checks show the scope of the problem. One supervisor wrote, Today I am getting numerous calls from upset teachers that their results are still not at the Ohio Department of Education. That supervisor added, this is extremely important because it is affecting a lot of teachers. I think it's a travesty. Undercover private investigator David Conley runs background checks for numerous Ohio companies. Conley recalls the problems created when local accountants tried getting required background checks to apply for jobs. And it dragged on for four or five months. And they kept being told by the accountancy board they never received it. They would call us, they would call BCI, and they were getting the the runaround and it's an unfortunate deal. Why were people with no criminal record finding it so challenging to be able to get background check clearance to get jobs? To find the answer, we flip the question. Why were people with criminal pass finding it so easy to get clearance? For some, the answer was here at the local courthouse. Guy Ferguson is Clark County's municipal court clerk. One of his responsibilities is to make certain that when a person gets convicted of a crime in court, the state background system is aware of that conviction as quickly as possible. Ferguson thought his records were sent without a problem, that is, until he got a call from BCI. They had not received any data from us since August, and our records indicated that we had sent the information to them through October, but had not received any confirmation. Ferguson thought he fixed the problem with a new way of sending the background check files, but then BCI changed the way they accept court records last summer. They, so they changed the system, but they didn't tell you about it. Yeah, that, when they changed it the second time. This problem wasn't limited to just Clark County. Technical problems prevented Franklin County records from being included in the state system. Cincinnati's Hamilton County went dark a total of five months. Several other counties failed to send in felony conviction records to the state for months. And there's another problem in getting clear and accurate background check information. The Attorney General's office looked at the courts this January. They found only these 18 counties in green send both misdemeanor and felony records electronically. Courts in Columbus, Toledo, and Cleveland, at least periodically, still send their records by mail. But criminals move faster than the mail. That and the numerous computer errors leaves police officers on the street relying on outdated information. Sergeant Vincent Shirey is with Ohio State Highway Patrol. If I'm making a traffic stop and I'm stopping an individual, I need to know in my cruiser as soon as I can if that individual ha has a felony warrant, if he has gun charges. In the Cleveland area, often Ohio's largest producer of criminal records, the problem is worse. Up until April of this year, Cuyahoga County court officials say they never knew that records they were sending had errors and weren't being added to the state's system. 
10 investigates was joined by the Columbus Dispatch in scrutinizing internal emails from the Attorney General's office. Reporter Randy Ludlow explains how the Attorney General's office deals with missing criminal records statewide. BCI employees spend countless hours on the phone trying to contact the courts to learn if there's been a conviction accompanying that arrest. And somewhat ironically, uh, in several cases, they have to resort to using the court's own website to see if there's a conviction, uh, much as uh, the public would do. That time-intensive process of checking court records also costs money. In three years, BCI spent $3.4 million in overtime for its 70 background check employees. Dr. James Wayman of California's San Jose State University has sounded the alarm on failing background check systems for years. You keep asking the system to do more and more, faster and faster, and the system wasn't designed to do that. Um, these systems break down quite regularly. They need to be regularly maintained, but not only that, they need to be replaced. So the problems were clear. Missing records, computer failures, all leading to Ohio's criminals getting off the record. But the question remained, what could be done to fix this? So we've shown you the problem, but what's being done to fix it? When we return, we'll show you what action the state is taking. I'm appalled that we're going to wait another two years to ensure that the system is fixed. And see why some say change isn't coming soon enough. And don't forget, you can chat online with our investigators right now on Facebook and Twitter. Just use the hashtag broken trust. Welcome back to a 10 TV News special report, Criminals Off the Record. I'm Kristen Hartman. And I'm Jerry Revish. Before the break, 10 investigates revealed how mistakes in the criminal background check system delay law-abiding people from getting jobs. And they also showed how criminals go off the record when local courts leave holes that last for months. 10 Investigates Nathan Vaca concludes our special report discovering ways these problems can be fixed. This half hour, we've told you how gaps in Ohio's criminal background check system can put your family in jeopardy. Together, we've discovered many dangers with the system, but the lingering question is how can we fix these failures? Now we're finding answers, uncovering secrets, and showing what you can do to protect your loved ones. We begin with the person at the top. Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine sat down with us to explain what his office is doing to correct problems at the Bureau of Criminal Investigation. BCI runs Ohio's background check system using software from company 3M Cogent. The AG's office sent a letter to Cogent in April. It says employees experienced more than 10,000 down hours in 2014, and Cogent's system continues to perform poorly this year as well. For that downtime, the AG's office is asking for a credit of $6.2 million. In their response, Cogent took no responsibility. Were you satisfied with Cogent's response? You know, I'm not so much interested in who's, who's responsible or who's going to take responsibility. What I'm interested in is how we get it fixed and how we move forward. The Attorney General's office says that a new background check system could be up and running by mid-2017. To accomplish that, the consultant, MTG Management Consultants, is expected to be paid about $500,000. We're frankly looking for this consultant uh, to help us uh, put everything together. This is uh, quite a complex operation. It's budget time at the Ohio State House, so we approached lawmakers from both parties to get their reaction on what 10 investigates uncovered about holes in Ohio's background check system. Well, I've naturally been uh, somewhat disappointed. Any fix would go through Republican State Senator John Eklund's Criminal Justice Committee. It will be scrutinized, but I know there'll be a lot of support in the Ohio Senate for, uh, for helping get at what the Attorney General has pledged to do. Ranking Democratic State Senator Charlita Tavares. But we're not addressing it. Uh, I would have hoped that a request would have come in if more money was needed. A request would have come in to the um, Budget Committee. Uh, none came in. It's a scandal because it's been going on for quite a bit of time. So what fascinated us is that Ohio lawmakers are only now hearing about major problems with the Ohio criminal background check system. It's been eight months since we first started asking questions. After all, the Ohio Attorney General's office is just across the street from the State House. So if the problems are serious enough to demand millions of dollars from a software company and to have a major overhaul of the system, 
Why are we only now hearing about these problems? We posed that question first to the person directly under the Attorney General, BCI Superintendent Tom Stickrath. What did the Attorney General know and when? He's been certainly aware of, uh, of issues with the architecture that we're dealing with and with our plans moving forward. At a recent event, Attorney General DeWine tells us he's written memos demanding urgent fixes. My staff knows, uh, and the memo certainly reflected my ur sense of urgency, um, that it's important for us to be able to constantly provide the data that is needed by law enforcement agencies. We asked the Attorney General's office for those memos during his five years as head of this office, but his office told us that no such memos exist. The Attorney General has also told us that millions of dollars have been spent to improve computer systems at BCI. We're in a situation where we're fixing it. We've already spent millions of dollars to fix the IT in, in, in the office because we know that law enforcement depends on it. But we asked to see how those millions of dollars were spent. We received no records. Thirdly, the Attorney General repeatedly says only a small number of employers were affected by background check errors. Last year, 1.3 million criminal records that we reported back. I think there were 195 uh, that we reported back. A person had no criminal record. We found out that they did. We asked for a list of employers given incorrect information about criminals they didn't know they were hiring. The Attorney General's office told us, once again, no such records exist. After 10 investigates began airing its findings this spring, those who have worked with the system began to talk. We heard current employees want to talk too, but can't due to their security clearance. Their association president, though, wanted to speak on their behalf. A lot of the calls that we, we are getting in currently, I mean, it, it talks to lack of manpower. It talks about a broken system that's been broken for quite some time at, at BCI. Another problem to confront are the missing records created when local courts fail to send them to the state. Ohio court clerks met mid-May in Columbus. BCI employees came to discuss ways to fix problems. But that BCI employee refused to speak to the clerks about background checks if our cameras were inside. Is there any chance that afterwards we, we can... We thank you for coming, uh, but I'm, I'm afraid that the doors will be closed. So elected officials met with a public agency to discuss ways to work a taxpayer-funded system all in secret. Criminal records are something you likely don't think about. That is, until a broken system delays your job application or can leave a sex offender caring for your child. So Nathan, what can people who are watching this report do about the problem? Well, there are ways you can get around some missing records by doing your own record search. Now, there are common pleas, municipal and mayor's courts that all have their own records, and each jail also has arrest records. We show you how you can find those step-by-step -step mm. on our website 10tv.com slash broken trust. But experts say one of the best ways to avoid becoming a victim is to know the people who worked with your loved ones. Questioning caregivers can give your family an extra layer of security. Always a good reminder, always a good piece of advice. Thank you, Nathan. And thank you for joining us for this special report. 10TV will continue to monitor this vital system to make sure criminals don't remain off the record. Good night.